So this isn't for today's food. This is French onion soup. And now I hand the camera off to my camera lady. Yes. Camera lady? I thought it was a camera. Just take the camera. <laughs> All right. What you want to start off with is two quarts of, over here, two <gasps> quarts of vegetable broth. I know what I'm doing. Like five or six big sweet yellow onions. Uh, you're going to need olive oil. But not until yeah, later. It's all the rest. Yeah, no, we'll have to buy more. Yeah. And you will also need uh, something else you need. Red wine, which we have some of, but that doesn't come into play until much later. So, onion. I'm going to show you how to break one down and then spare you the, you know, breaking down of all the onions so that we'll uh, you know, have to watch. But basically, <laughs> take one of your big onions. Rachel Ray uses these on her cooking show. She calls them garbage bowls. This is really convenient to have somewhere to dump all the crap. So feel free to scrape off all the thick outer, or the, you know, the outer leaves parts of the end you don't need anyway. Which actually becomes much easier after you just chop the damn thing in half. So, chop, I, I always chop from the bottom because it's a little bit cleaner. Just want it roughly in half. And now it's really easy to get all this stuff off. So we just take off the brown papery part along with anything else that looks questionable. This whole layer is kind of weird looking, so there. You lose a lot. It seems like you lose a lot, but it's fine. We got lots of onions. Well, it's like an ogre. Layers. You're not supposed to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. You're a camera person. Sorry. It's not like an ogre. Ogres are like parfaits. You like a parfait. Yeah. Moving on. So remember, you have to do this for each onion, obviously. And once you have that done, the bottom part here is both not palatable and also supposedly where a lot of the stuff that makes you cry comes from. So you want to just diagonally cut that out on both sides, like so. Now we have the onions ready for extra chopping. Usually what I'll do is get them all to this point and then do the next stage. So we'll stop there and then I'll show you uh, what the finished, what the next part looks like when I have the rest of these broken down. Okay, so now what we're going to do is break down the onions. As you can see, I've already gone ahead and turned them all down like I showed you before. So they're ready for chopping. And I'm cutting almost all the way to the back of the onion. I don't know if you can bring the camera in here and see how the cuts are almost going to the back, but not all the way. There's like a little space right there. That helps the onions stay together. And once you've made, say, five or six <coughs> of these cuts all the way almost to the back, you can go ahead and come from the front. And about a half an inch at a time, just chop. And this, what this does is it has the onion come out in nice rough chunks, which are ideal for one, the texture of the soup in the end, and the caramelizing of the onions. And so, once you get down to it, there's not much left, lay it down, and then just chop it this way. And suddenly, you have all these nice rough chunks of onion. You can see I already put one in here before. And you just want to pile them in here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of these onions, and we'll come back after that's done, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so as you can see, our pot is full. It seems like I always somehow get just enough onions to fill the pot up. Oh, that's here, that can be broken up. So now you have your pot of roughly chopped onions. Next, we go to the stove. So, what we have in here is a lot of raw, unseasoned uh, onion. So we're going to need to use some olive oil to lube it up, because that helps caramelize. And, uh, this is probably going to be almost not enough olive oil. I'm usually I use a quarter to a half a cup. And the whole point is just to put in enough olive oil that when you take your next item, which is nice and stir, you should be able to coat all the onion and like not like thoroughly coat every onion, but you want to have a nice bit of oil going through the onions so that when they cook, they uh, have something to cook in without just burning. So I actually might end up supplementing this with a little bit of canola oil, depending on how this looks. So anyway. Assuming you have enough oil to coat it, which I don't, I'm going to probably put some canola in here. You would just use olive oil normally. You want to take a good bit of salt, I want to say like almost a tablespoon, a couple of teaspoons at least. And you want to, you're going to have to season this whole pot. Onion helps draw the water out. I mean, uh, salt helps draw the water out of the onion, and it helps the onions caramelize and turn nice and yellow and get sweet, which is what we're ultimately going for. So, it's probably enough salt. I can always add more later. So, just give it a stir. You want it try and have everything as evenly distributed as possible. Okay, now, um, what we're going to try to do now is get time-lapse footage of the whole pot cooking, because this is where the really cool part happens, and the whole thing will shrink by two-thirds and turn dark, dark yellow. Uh, I'm going to try and film that process, but that's going to involve taping this camera on top of this microwave looking down, so I'm kind of skeptical that I can make this work, but I'm going to try. So, uh, we'll see if this works. 
Okay, so I did add some canola oil. Uh, the only problem with that really is that it's really flavor neutral. Uh, olive oil just tastes better. So usually I just use olive oil, but whatever, this will be fine. I use mostly olive oil. And so now we're going to go and put this onto caramelizing heat, which is to say between medium and high. And believe it or not, this next part of the process will take the better part of an hour. <laughs> Turn the heat up to full blast and give it a minute to really heat up. And look how dark. And you taste it. Like there's actually like the onions are soft like butter. You can shape them like they're so soft. And then you can actually there's like onion residue on the spoon. You can actually taste. And it tastes sweet. There's actually sweetness from the onions now. So it really tastes like sweet onion jam or something. Anyway. So now that it's, uh, it's mostly the heat's on high and everything's nice and dark brown and the steam, you notice the steam is also less now too because there's less water in there to come out so there's less steam. This is called deglazing and there's not much stuff to the bottom of this pan. But what I've done is taken about a quarter cup of red wine and just some black pepper and a little bit of Creole seasoning and you dump that in here like so. Sound effects required. And then you use that to, to scrape any crusty bits that have come from the onion off the bottom of the pan. So you want to make sure the bottom of the pan is scraped clean. Get all the bits around the corners and everything. And then use the next here, make sure it's all nice and homogenized. Once everything's nice and mixed in the bottom, you can see there's nothing really stuck to the bottom anymore. It's pretty clean. For the brief moment, you can see it before the end seeps back in. And once that's done, it's time to bring two quarts of vegetable broth into play. As you may have guessed, we're going to dump the entirety of this in here. Now I should add that uh, the vegetable broth, this is the vegan version of this. There's nothing in here that isn't vegan. Uh, all it is is onion, salt, pepper, olive oil, garlic, and at this point, vegetable broth. So this is the vegan version and tastes really freaking good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way at all. However, it could be argued that the flavor would be better if you were to use beef broth. So, or preferably beef stock. So if you have a good beef stock and use that, It'll arguably taste even better if that's your thing. But I like to make the vegetable version. Because that way anyone can have some. Despite their dietary preferences. I'm impatient, that's why I'm squeezing the box instead of pouring. Two quarts of vegetable broth are in, and you can see we now have a nice full bowl of soup. Alright, so now all that's left is to let this come to a boil and then reduce the heat to low, cover it and let it simmer for about half an hour and then now you have delicious soup.